Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I've finally got my hands on one of these, a Google AIY kit for the Raspberry Pi. And this allows us to add some hardware to the Raspberry Pi so we can use it a bit like a Google Home device, so we can access Google AI services on the Raspberry Pi. So this is rather exciting. Let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have our kit with a Made By You with Google written on the front. And this is the first of the Google AIY projects. If we look at the website for that, you can see AIY is all about do-it-yourself artificial intelligence. And Google's intention is to put AI into the Maker Toolkit. And if we scroll down, you will see the voice kit as we've got here is the first kit to become available. It's currently the only kit to be available. So, if we just turn this thing around, we can uh, open it up, it just hinges like that and oh look we get a, a piece of cardboard but also we get um, or oh, we get an actual little booklet this kit was first sold with the uh, magpie magazine the raspberry pi magazine but they now give you a little booklet explaining all the things you could do with it that's rather nice isn't it and uh, then we get some bits of cardboard which are actually very important because these are actually the mount for the project and the actual case it ends up in this is really a, a, a diy project in a, in a cardboard box but other than bits of cardboard and instructions, we have these things here. We have a, a speaker, we have a, a button, various wires and connectors and things. We have a stereo microphone board, and we have this hat, the uh, Google AIY voice hat. So I think what we'll do, we'll get these out to have a closer look at them. So we'll start out with the, uh, the hat itself. And uh, here it is. For those of you not even know, a hat is simply something that fits on the top of a, a Raspberry Pi. So this voice hat will fit on top of the Raspberry Pi by using the uh, connector here, which will interface with the GPIO pins. Oh look, we've got a made by you with Google down there as well. They're obviously very proud of the, the slogan. And this basically allows the Raspberry Pi to link up to the speaker we're using here. And it's got a connector here to link to the microphone board and also to the switch that's supplied. And as you probably noticed, it can also potentially have pins added to some of these pads to connect to other things like, like servos. I won't be trying that out in, in this particular video, this project, but there's clearly all sorts of potential. And they do supply you with uh, this set of pins so you can take these pins off individually and, and solder these on if you happen to need them. So this connects with the, this little cable, as I said, to the, uh, the microphone board. If we just bring that in. Here is the microphone board, which is a stereo microphone. You can probably see here we've got a what left and right microphones here and that's really all that's on this board other than the connector to connect it through to the uh, the main hat board and then in addition to this we've got the speaker as you can see and we've got all these parts which will build up the switch which has got an led in the top and also a switch itself and i have noticed that uh, the parts supplied here are slightly different to the ones covered on the website in terms of the instructions there and also the instructions in the book supplied so i'm sure it'll all work but i've got to figure out exactly how it fits together anyway these are all the parts. It's now time for a bit of construction. So, this shouldn't be too difficult to put together. We will, of course, need a, a Raspberry Pi. I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 here. And uh, we need to first of all fit a couple of standoffs onto the board, which just clip in like this. Those are in there. And we can now take the hat and fit it on top of GPIO pins, and it should also line up with those standoffs. And there we are, the hat is now fitted to our Raspberry Pi. That was nice and straightforward. We can also plug in the wires for the switch and the microphone board, which go in, I think, like this. And also over here, like this. And we can connect in the, uh, the speaker, which will go to the speaker connector over here. There we are. If only all projects were as simple as that. And finally, in terms of the electronic side, if you like, we just need to connect to the, uh, the microphone here. And the microphone has got on the back of all the microphones, I should say, has got a connector, which will connect to the microphone connector. So that is all the basic electronics put together for this project. So, the next thing we need to do is to take these. These are what we can call the cardboardy parts. So these have to make up into a box and an insert. So I'll just do that. And uh, there we are, we have the outer box. Here is the insert. 
And uh, there we are, that slightly defeated me. I think that's roughly how it ends up. And I think the idea is that uh, the speaker now drops in somewhere in this, this configuration. The speaker drops in, I imagine, like this. And there we are. And the Raspberry Pi. There we are. I think that's roughly how it works. It's one of these clever boxes, isn't it? I think the person who does these also designs uh, Easter eggs and things like that. And all of this somehow now drops in. Oh, I think it's going to work. That's that's rather impressive, actually. That's rather rather good, isn't it? All holds in and the Pi's connectors are in the a decent places on the board. And yes, that's actually going to, uh, to work quite nicely. There we are. So next thing we need to do is to put the button together. And as I said earlier, this is a completely different button configuration to the one you can see in the instructions, but maybe it won't be in your kit. But I think what we need to do is to remove that so we'll be able to screw that into the box. But then we also need to put this thing together. So I'll just do that. And uh, there we are, wouldn't so that's easy to fit in because it isn't. The LED clearly goes in the top, we'll just push that in here. So that's all in one piece. So we can now fit that in the box through there, like this. And then the back of our switch goes in here. This I think is a little bit of a swine to get in. Oh no, there we are, that's that's in there, that's, that's pretty good, that's all in place. And I need to secure the uh, microphone in there, which is uh, available. We just need to put, I think, some tape on that. So I just need to get a bit of tape and secure that in like this. There we are, that is secured. Our microphones are uh, visible at the front there. They're coming out quite nicely. That's probably the weakest point of this construction, having that held in with tape. And then finally, I just need to put these wires onto the switch, so I'll get on with that. And uh, there we are, the uh, black and white wires go to the switch. I'm pretty certain those are the correct positions for those. Obviously, it doesn't matter which way around they are, they're, they're a switch. And uh, the red and blue are from the LED. I have no idea which way around to put them in because it depends which way around you plugged in the LED. It would have gone in either way. I might have to switch those later on. If the LED's in the wrong way around, then I can always flick them back. It won't be the end of the world if the LED's connected the wrong way around initially. And it, maybe it's a tricolor or bicolor LED. I just don't know. Anyway, that's all finished. So I can now just close the thing up. And uh, there we are, our finished Google AIY construction. So I just need to add in the usual power cable, HDMI cable connectors for keyboard and mouse, and we can get on with adding some software to our Google AIY kit. So here we are on the uh, Raspbian desktop on the Raspberry Pi. I'm actually running a version of Raspbian which was downloaded from the Google AIY Projects website. So this image has got all the things required to do the Google AIY stuff. As you can see, we've got various checking things here. So we could check, for example, audio works. I'll just try that. Front Run that up. Center. Oh, it was speaking to us. Did we hear sound? Yes, we did. When I'm ready, press the enter and say testing one, two, three. Okay, we'll try that. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Yes, that obviously works. And uh, as you might have noticed, there's quite a loud speaker on the, uh, the Google Cardboardy box thing. So what we now need to do is to go to the Google Cloud Platform and to set this up. So I've got the web page opened up here. And I just need to put my password in, that's all sorted out. And we'll go through to Google. And uh, here we are. And the first thing we need to do is to create a project. So we'll do that. And uh, Presumably we click that, and there we are. My project's going to be called, I think, um, we'll call it uh, Pi AIY. We'll do that. Uh, do I agree? Do I want email updates? No. Do I agree to services? Of course I do. Create project. 
And there we are, we can see our project selected up here. We now need to enable the API, the application programming interface for this particular project. We'll search for Google Assistant. And there we are, we found it down here. So we'll select Google Assistant. There we are, that is now enabled. And we'll go to Manage. We now need to create some credentials. And uh, there we are down there. And we want the OAuth client ID credentials. We'll have to configure our consent screen, apparently. Product name shown to users, we'll call this, um, what should we call it? We'll call it Google um, AIY Pi. Just give it a different name to previously, not to confuse ourselves. And uh, we'll save um, that. Oh, we don't like the word Google in that, that's absolutely fine. So I'll just call it AIY Pi. It's going to be an other. We'll call it AIY Other 01, why not? That's fine, apparently. And we now need to download a file to the Pi which will actually allow this to work. So we'll click on the download arrow. There we are, it's downloaded that. And if we uh, just go to the uh, file manager and we go to what download is here, there's the file. We need to rename this file because that's a rather long name and it has to be called assistant.json, that's okay. And it also has to be in, we will cut it from there and we have to put it back in just pi and home. So it goes in there. So in theory that's set up on the Pi. So we'll just close that, go back to our uh, web page stuff here. We now need to go to our Google Activity Control. So to get the link, I'll just flick over here, I think, and we'll go to the AI Web Projects page. And there is our link. And so here on this page, we need to turn on the web and app activity, like over there and turn on, yeah, there we are. We need to turn on um, down here device information. There we are. And we also need to turn on voice and audio fairly obviously. And there we are. In theory, with all those things activated, everything is now set up on the Pi to use Google Assistant. So, I'm now back on the Raspbian desktop. I've closed out all the windows I was running previously. I've actually done a restart, which seemed necessary to make all this work properly. And our box is sitting there waiting to do very exciting things. So if I go to the uh, terminal link on the desktop, run that up, we can run Google Assistant using the command they helpfully remind us of up here. Now I've got that in the buffer, so I could just put that there and press enter. And there we are. Google Assistant is now running. I will point out the very first time you do that, you have to provide authorization to allow it to work. It'll take you to a web page, you select your account, and then after that, you don't have to do that ever again. So now we've got Google Assistant running, let's give it a workout. Okay, Google, what is the weather in New York? It's currently 61 and mostly cloudy there. It'll be mostly cloudy there with a forecast high of 65 and a low of 62. OK, Google, how many people live there? The population of New York City was 8.538 million in 2016. Now, I think that's slightly clever. It actually remembered from the first question that I was talking about New York in the second question. As you'll probably notice, the LED on top of the box is now slowly pulsing. There it was there. It pulses when the thing is waiting for um, voice input. I would point out the instructions for this project tell you that as soon as you turn the Pi on with a voice hat attached, the LED will flash. That's not true, so don't worry about that. It'll only start flashing when you actually run Google Assistant. So let's try another question. OK, Google, how old are you? If you're asking if I've had work done, I'll have you know these are my original features. Well, there we are. OK, Google, how are you? Great, thanks. What can I do for you? 
OK, Google, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence, the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between languages. And there we are. I'm having my first ever conversation with a cardboard box. But more seriously, what we've proved is we can run Google Assistant using the voice hat on the Raspberry Pi. Now, of course, there's lots of other exciting things we can do with this kit, controlling LEDs and motors and all that kind of stuff, but we'll leave that to a future video. So there we are. We've accessed Google AI services on a Raspberry Pi. And as you may remember, not that many videos back now, well, probably quite a few months back, I accessed Amazon's Alexa AI services also from a Raspberry Pi. There is no doubt that AI is shifting online and it's great we can access it from our favourite single board computer. Anyway, that's now it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.